Thank you so much. I sincerely thank everyone uh, for uh, uh, inviting me on your show and uh, beloved uh, principal Dr. Paul Raj. Uh, I thank you and uh, I should really congratulate you and I should say that you have got a good team around you and uh, the team has, uh, as you said, aptly has identified this particular topic which is more apt and uh, uh, thank you so much for having me on your show again. And I remember uh, earlier we met uh, in person and uh, the principal is very much known to me and he's not just close to me when we went close to my heart. And uh, I should also thank uh, the research department of uh, NMCC, management department, uh, Dr. Jabba Belvin for uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts with uh, your students. I think I find mostly, you know, the students of the BBA, MBA, and some of the teachers from management field, and somebody else is also maybe there. And uh, uh, I think the context for you know today's webinar is made very clear. But still, uh, just few things, you know, that I need to talk about is that you know for, for the last uh, maybe couple of months, the entire uh, world is being you know, getting affected with the pandemic crisis. And this crisis has uh, put everybody into, you know, uh, maybe, you know, altered everybody's routine life. Maybe whether individual or uh, your family or your professional life, your job or your sector, your business, everyone, not even a single, with both the rich and the poor, everybody got affected with this. Now, the point is, uh, today we talk more about the business and how this business is coping with this kind of a crisis. And, uh, you know, especially that the topic we say that, you know, business uh, resilience. So uh, how a business is coping with this challenge and be able to come out from this challenge and uh, keep moving. That is what we are going to talk about it. And this experience is not uh, the same across the different uh, countries. It is not the same across the different sectors. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, today we have got a couple of panelists. I also feel very happy to be, you know, to be one among the panelists today. You know, we have got a different panels and uh, people from the different sectors. I'm going to talk about agribusiness sector. I think uh, somebody will talk about uh, hospital, then hospitality and uh, all this different sector. Rather, you know, the speakers, all the three J's, uh, John Mano, John Felix and the Jack Mano, you know, three J's, you know, I'm sure that, you know, we'll be able to bringing some holistic dimension. And uh, if you look at the kind of the extent of the crisis, all the three different sectors had got a three different kind of an experiences. And what I'm going to talk about is about, you know, something very specific about uh, the agribusiness sector. You know, since I come from that particular sector, I thought I'll be able to share some of my experience. It was already, you know, uh, instructed to you, give any of the participants have any questions, please put it on the uh, chat box, you know, so that if time permits towards an end, you know, we, I'll be able to uh, answer some of the questions, right? So uh, I think, you know, the, the topic is in the business resilience and the COVID-19 crisis, you know, from the agribusiness perspective. And uh, my presentation will run through this uh, content, what exactly this resilience is all about, something very brief about the agribusiness sector, and what are the major impact of the COVID-19 to this sector, and some few experiences, how uh, the you know people in this particular sector are coping to this particular challenge, and how they are able to keep going in spite of the crisis. 
so when you say resilience it's not that you know only the concept of a crisis management or it is just not that only the business continuity management so it is a combination of all this maybe you know have got you know the preparation for the recovery risk management or business continuity then you have a contingency plan all of this is put together that tells about you know uh, maybe a resilience now this resilience is you know it is nothing but it is a capacity or ability of a system to adapt to the challenges and then keep going now the system may be your you as an individual your family how you are getting adapted to this particular crisis your organization your society at large right so it is applicable to any kind of a system right so if you look at uh, uh, the impact how the the, the different sectors are uh, coping with this particular uh, uh, crisis the experience is different across the different sectors maybe there are some sectors they they have they have uh, gone for a v shape it is something like you know uh, the sudden unexpected unpredicted you know the crisis when they came it had an impact but quickly they came back to the normal there is another different kind of a sector they had a, a damage but with a little damage uh, they will, they were able to make some corrections and come back it was more of an u shape and finally that is more of an l shape it is more ugly where you know the, there is a decline in the growth or there is a negative uh, growth and they were not able to so that is more of an l shape and uh, globally if you look at the, some of the major sectors that had a very a bad impact on this crisis is about you know the hotel tourism travel you know all this uh, uh, you know sectors but if you take something very similar you know this was a survey which was conducted in india the different sectors experience over a period right you know there are some sectors like again the airlines and the hotels very badly affected but if you take the agriculture sector the impact was not very bad as compared to other there are multiple reasons for that right you all know about when you say agriculture and agri business it is it's a to the food and uh, the nutrition concerns of the people are being met so therefore this sector cannot be stopped and this sector need to even come back you know quick to back to the normal now to to give a very briefing about you know the typical indian uh, the agriculture is the largest employer with 58 percentage of the workforce and uh, the largest producer of the pulses uh, sugarcane cotton and milk and the largest in inventory of livestock right 536 million the world's uh, highest uh, producer of tractors now these are some of the basic uh, you know statistics about indian agriculture but what is happening is that you know when you find this sector is undergoing a change how this sector is responding to this particular crisis you know uh, it is something like you know uh, this bird is uh, some of you would have heard of this bird and this is a dodo bird uh, which was uh, maybe found uh, in madagascar you know in the island of the indian ocean around 300 to 400 years back now it's a bird of extinct and uh, there are a couple of reasons there are so many lessons that we can learn from this particular bird which is extinct i'm sure that you know, some of you will be knowing about it and one of the major reasons for the extinct is that this bird lost its ability to get adapt right now this is a bird you know which is which it, it lost its uh, uh, flying ability the reason is that you know this bird was you know finding you know though it was coming from the family of a pigeon and a dove this bird could not fly because in that particular island uh, this bird was enjoying you know and eating the the fruits which is available there and it put on weight and uh, the, the the bird which put on weight you know average of you know about uh, uh, 17 to 23 kgs of weight each bird and uh, which is much more weighted than your turkey so finally you know what happened was you know the, the major reason was there was no predator neither human nor animals predators so they were enjoying their particular territory and over a period of time the sailors slowly started entering into that uh, island and they started eating the bird and they liked it and they started eating and finally now this time you know, the bird wanted to fly but it could not because the bird lost its ability to get adapt or it's lost its ability to fly now today one of the major reasons why the business are not resilient not getting adapted to the new crisis because you were in a very comfort zone you are used to certain things and you find it very difficult to come out from that so the, the simple the best thing to learn is that you flexible you need to be 
business to happen you need to be open to the environment you need to be flexible and you need to be innovative and you need to be you need to keep going and if that is not there i'm very sure that you know any business to survive is it's a very big question mark especially in a pandemic crisis like this which has impacted very badly everyone now little thing about uh, agri business i'm sure that you know some of you will be knowing about it. Uh, over a period of time uh, you know the in india there was a revolution you know we keep talking about uh, farmers need to shift from agriculture to agri business so it is nothing but you know farmers not that just concentrating on the production they also need to concentrate on the post harvesting practices maybe the value addition maybe like you know the processing and even the distribution and the marketing on their own so this agri business was you know getting more momentum and there's a revolution that was happening and uh, this sector is undergoing tremendous changes already even not even before uh, this covid pandemic crisis but now the question is when this agri business sector which was growing at a very faster rate and uh, a sector which was having more relevance to the society and more relevance to the people and and uh, uh, it got disrupted because of this particular pandemic crisis now why the agri business sector is again very really important because it contributes so much to the economy and it takes care of the farmers welfare and it gives livelihood for the the poor people india predominantly an agrarian economy wherein it gives lot of livelihood for majority of the population and gives so much of employment opportunity more importantly you know increasing the the food requirement because the population is growing at a faster rate to ensure you know the food supply this agri business sector is uh, is very very important and with this particular background let us see what are the major disruptions that the indian agriculture and the agri business sector experienced uh, post covid or during this covid time there are i, I would say about you know, there are the two important uh, 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 areas. One is the disruptions on the supply, and another is the dis disruptions on the demand side. So, if you look at the supply side uh, disruptions, the major reason for the supply side uh, disruption is the labor availability. Now, the labor, you know, as I told you earlier, this is the the agri the sector is the highly labor intensive, and uh, uh, which especially the migrant labors. uh there are a significant you know the the percentage of uh, migrant laborers come from the agriculture sector also now when you find this you know the people the laborers start migrating from one place to another place from their destination to their source now when this has happened all this agriculture practices farming operations uh, came to hold yeah. you would have experience you would have seen in many of the uh, even some channels like you know even in tamil nadu or even various parts of the country where the farmers were not going to the field for harvesting practices or even farming practices because they were not having sufficient labor so if you look at uh, some statistics you know which was uh, recently that study was uh, done by mark they said that the covid impact on agriculture operations 80% said yes they had an impact and out of that majority of them the impact is on the harvesting and uh, otherwise the other areas where uh, you know the agriculture operations got affected in the land preparations and uh, fertilizer applications and so on and so forth right so therefore there is an impact and there is no doubt about it right but then uh, if you look at even you know for the the percentage of uh, the migrant workers there is a significant migrant percentage comes from the agriculture sector also so therefore there is no doubt that agriculture practices got affected because of the migration and because of the labor not made available and uh, but interestingly uh, that uh, mark study they also studied about you know how many people will stay back those who have you know migrated from their uh, source to the destinations you know or sorry destination to the source Uh, majority of them they said that they will stay back and, and among those majority of them they say that you know they are from the agriculture sector but the other side of the flip side of it if you look at this is recently yesterday or day for yesterday the agriculture sector secretary has released uh, this press notice they say that the karif sowing area has shown a record increase so in spite of this crisis in spite of the slowdown or in sorry in spite of the gone up 
the major reason is that the agri input did not get affected because you know the agriculture input was uh, treated as uh, more of a what is essential commodity so there is no disruption in the supply of the agriculture input so ultimately the sowing area has gone up and this is a very positive indication and and i would say that in spite of the crisis you know people are able to come back quickly you know back to the original position the second uh, the major concern in the supply side is the you know the disruptions in the the supply chain the logistics like you know the, the possible uh, the problem is that you have uh, made the land preparations you have uh, got a very good harvesting but now the question is that uh, how do you transport it there is you know no transport facility which is available and the flight recorder you know maybe somewhere in the early march which was uh, you know recorded that itself that shows about you know how much uh, the you know the travel flight you know the the density has come down very similar to the entire the global uh, logistics have uh, paralyzed so ultimately in you know, india like you know that we export so much of our agriculture produce definitely the supply chain got affected right so the, the latest experience is being you know yesterday some of you would have uh, seen this like you know the farmers in punjab you know they said that there is no bias because you know nobody is going there no trader no wholesaler is going there no processor is going there to buy their produce so they you know they burnt it and they spoil so this kind of an experience were happening you also would have heard that even in tamil nadu like you know the farmers they have harvested their uh, the, i mean uh, brinjals and you know tomatoes and they are throwing it on the street because you know there is there is no bias typically this is because of you know what you call it as uh, there is no transport facility available because of the lockdown there is no movement now the question is when such kind of a crisis comes how do you come back or how do you keep going so that is what is the resilience that we are talking about it we will come to the resilience of the experience how uh, the some of the farmers are going back to the normal positions but before that the second major constraint is a disruption is the disruption in the demand side so disruption in the supply side is one and the disruption in the demand side is another now i am sure that if you touch yourself and you ask you know the, the last couple of months what kind of a change has taken place in you maybe the way in which you interact with your people the way in which the, your time spent how do you spend your leisure time and uh, how do you uh, how much time you spend with your family members and what is your uh, food uh, food eating preferences and the consumption pattern i'm sure that you know you all will be able to share your own experiences and there's a lot of change that started happening even in the consumption side also but otherwise if you look at you know ultimately uh, especially you talk about the food and food related there is you know the ict like you know the, the media is making people more aware of uh, the 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 product where it is produced and how it is produced and uh, everybody the consumer wanting to know about uh, where the product is being produced and how it is being produced especially this kind of a covid kind of a situation people wanted to be, people wanted to uh, know about uh, who are all the people who have touched your you know the commodity or your product because you know the uh, the more touch more is the possibility of the spread of the viruses so therefore all this like you know the it has created a lot of concern from the the demand side or from the consumer side so ultimately so ultimately uh, if you uh, look at you know the change in the you know the consumption pattern uh, one like you know the reverse migration has uh, altered uh, what do you call it as the the change altered the structure in the market maybe there is every possibility of you know the urban consumption uh, going to a standstill and the rural consumption going up then the consumption of the basic food or the nutrition intake where your which food group you are in you know your nutrition comes whether it comes and comes from vegetable and vegetable based product or animal and animal based product now it, it it's like you know if there is a notion that you know if you have more of you know the virus uh, you know attack through the meat and meat product there is every possibility that you know the meat intake will go down and the vegetable and vegetable intake will go up and another important one is because of the lockdown people started you know uh, prefer, uh, preferring more of what you call it as you know eating food from home and home preparation and uh, this will have a serious impact on the distribution especially some of the food product the processed food product the producers like itc 
they were major segment was you know hotel and restaurants so that also get affected that the next one is the shift in the family dynamics so you are you know the your family people you know spending more time with you and uh, your parents and the children and ultimately oh, yeah. the purchase decision is also getting affected yeah. and finally there is a, there is a possibility yeah. of what you call it as the global wise there yeah. is a possibility of homogenization of the consumption so globally people will prefer to consume those product that are having high nutritional intake ultimately that may lead to what you call it as shortage of some product and oversupply of some product so this will have an implication to even to the, the farmers the the policy makers and even the processors to ensure that you supply the right quantity of the right product to the right market now uh, there is another major shift which is happening in the consumer side is preferring to go for online shopping and instead of you know going to the offline sh I mean, uh, shopping and be because of you know the most of the malls being shut and uh, people started downloading the different apps and started buying from the online even you know the study shows that you know in those who had a fear of buying or security issues of buying through online they also started downloading the app and buying from online the next one is whether home cooking or the restaurant cooking as i told you earlier the horeca that is you know, the hotel restaurant and cafe that was a major segment and that segment completely got altered right now the question is at one particular segment whether it has declined whether it will equalize the home consumption or whether the home consumption will compensate what you were happy, uh, having at the urban uh, restaurant consumption i don't think that you know you can really substitute that so those were again another challenge so ultimately when this kind of what you call it as uh, the demand side uh, concern is giving us more of a crisis the producer now we have producer here especially what you call it as the the farmers you have to think of okay to dispatch to okay to consume whether the farmer is you know someone or the marketer or the producer someone is able to willing to take up this kind of a risk now as of now what happens is that you know you produce the product you give it to the trader your responsibility is over but today because of this pandemic crisis customer will appreciate the consumers confidence will level level will go up if you take up the responsibility and give a guarantee to the consumer they say that this is okay to consume so that is what is the important relevance today and there are many experiences where the the people have jumped at this particular opportunity and made use of it i'll share a few of the things another major shift ultimately what is happening is that you know uh, till before what they called as the the covid uh, covid uh, the commencement uh, everybody started telling that you know the india there is a major shift which is happening and the food product is concerned food consumption people give more importance to the emotional motive than to the rational motive people go to the shop and people go to the outside as a leisure as a entertainment as a fun they go to the malls and they consume so that was happening the prior to this particular covid now what is happening is that this covid crisis has reversed this motive now it has shifted from emotional motive to the rational motive now consumer wanting to know about you know where the product is produced how it is produced who has processed it and uh, who which are the the the, the, or the traceability which are the routes where this particular product is, uh, is uh, traveled so this has become the put on put on another important challenge to the producers and the farmers so therefore when this kind of a change is happening you need to keep going it is true that you know you, that there is you are going through a very difficult time as winston churchill said if you are going through the path of hell keep going don't get stuck you will have a very terrific experience of hell but when you keep going don't get stuck you know there will be some opening somewhere so that is what we are talking about resilience when this major concerns like you know the demand concern and the supply concerns that acts as a crisis because of the you know the covid and how clever you are in coping to this particular uh, uh, change and adapting to it and accepting the challenge and then keep going now I, I, let me share some of the experiences maybe you know uh, one possibility which uh, which uh, you can explore to keep going is that apply the best technology as of now the application of technology in indian farming or in processing or in supply chain is not that very satisfactory though it was going up there is a lot of area where you need an improvement and this is one of the reasons why 
this sector was not attracting many of the people to spend their talent and to spend their money in this sector. But the trend is like, you know, here is a person, you know, uh, suburb, somewhere in a suburb of Bangalore. You know, he's an youngster and he started his own uh, farm. And he was working as an IT professional. He left this, I think this is somewhere closer to Bangalore. And uh, he started, you know, his own farm. And uh, it's a, a, what he called as more of a hydroponics, soil is farming. And he has got a lot of exotic fruits and vegetables. And he has got all nearby market and he is selling it. So he's definitely, I'm sure that he's the person who's not really getting affected with this. Second one, another important one, the resilience to keep going is that you kindly make yourself what you call the concept of what you call as a farmer producer organization. So this farmer producer organization is not that quite new. And uh, ever since this concept of Stephen Nabad has been taking of that. You know, there is a separate website, you know, some of you, those who are interested can go through that, the small agribusiness consortium. So when you go through this small agribusiness consortium that talks about how many FPOs are there, you know, crop wise and state wise. And they do a lot of activities right from farming, value addition, processing, even to the marketing, different activities they do. You know, minimum of 300 farmers, they come together, they have, you know, their own organization and uh, it's a collective farming and collective marketing, collective processing and collective uh, marketing. And uh, this is one experience by a Shayadri farm in Maharashtra, somewhere in Nashik, the place which is, you know, so much so famous for uh, produ production of uh, uh, grapes. Last year, the same period, uh, they, they made a lot of money. 2018-19 through through export, but now the question is, you know, uh, the, the this year uh, the the harvesting was about to come. By the time this lockdown has come, you know, just imagine it was, you know, it was the next. They were all waiting anxiously for this particular time, but unexpected this COVID. Now let's see how they have uh, come back to the normal. Now this COVID virus did not stop them from going further. You know, the, the, the great business uh, shrunk from two crore or shrunk, shrunk to crore, two crore from 17 crore. So they knew that, you know, if they still continue to do this, you know, exporting of uh, this grapes, definitely they will not be able to succeed. So what they did was, you know, they have gone for, you know, some slight change. This is what you call as a Jugard innovation. So you don't make much investment and think alternatively and keep going. So what they did was they started, uh, you know, supplying fresh fruits and vegetables to the nearby cities like, you know, the Pune, Nashik and Mumbai. Because all these three important cities were, you know, very much very badly affected by this lockdown. So to ensure that, you know, these fruits and vegetables are reaching to the households, they, you know, they came in contact with the households and housing society, 850 housing society, and they managed to supply 2.5 lakh baskets to 90,000 customers right so about uh, 3500 tons of fruits and vegetables they could, could sell and uh, look at their you know this quarter you know uh, their uh, uh, revenue has reached about 74 crore compared to last year 69 crore this is a typically what you call as a turnaround or it is something like you know keep going and uh, how you're uh, adapted to this particular crisis Right. So this is it, all this work because Shayadri farms had their own name. People were knowing about Shayadri farms. They also told that, you know, how important they are giving to the, you know, the hygiene and uh, the employees uh, health. They are taking care of it and ultimately they promoted and uh, they have done a very good job. Something very similar, you know, another SPO again in Maharashtra. Right. And uh, they also started, you know, uh, started procuring the uh, see pulse and cereals. So with that, they made enough 550 crore from uh, this pulses uh, procurement alone. But then, uh, very interestingly, what they did was this FPO out of their revenue and out of their uh, uh, their income, they also contributed a significant amount to the chief minister's relief fund, COVID relief fund. So look at how uh, they are innovative and how how they are not getting stuck and keep going. And Something very similar is that, you know, the Alfonso Minko in uh, Ratnagiri, part of the Maharashtra, which is very famous, which has got so much of export value. They also, what they did was, you know, instead of uh, depending upon uh, the, the, the conventional or a traditional way of marketing, because they got disrupted. What they 
because uh, they had their own uh, WhatsApp group and got connected and they started selling it. And uh, their case studies again, which is this is very interesting. The last year through the middleman, you know, they could they they sold for seven hundred rupees and customer got a two hundred two thousand to two thousand five hundred rupees. The same mango this year they avoided the middleman through the technology they got connected. And thanks to the COVID, you know, COVID the pandemic crisis, like you know, they were able to make more money, thousand five hundred against, or they were able to make thousand five hundred against seven hundred, and even you know, the the consumers were also getting them for a cheaper price. So it is more of a win-win uh, kind of an approach. Something very similar, what what even Karnada also they have done during the peak mango season, MOU with uh, the Flipkart to distribute their mango. Now. Therefore, what is required is that you know connect or use the digital technology, and I'm sure that you know if I remember in a, a couple of uh, I think uh, months back you know when I was addressing to the same audience in March, the NMCC, they I think uh, they were organizing a seminar on uh, the digital era. I think uh, all the detail tells you tomorrow what is the future is going to be. Even there need to be a complete application of the digital technology in marketing also, right now. Uh, if somebody wanting to know about who is the farmer, from which farm it is coming, you have a what you call this more of a QR code, quick response code, and you scan the code, and uh, the consumer will come to know about who has produced which farmer from which place it is coming. Because as of now, I'm sure that you know the the consumer confidence level comes down the moment you come to know that your product comes from a city or a place where that got very badly affected by the COVID virus. So people will appreciate more if your product is coming from a place that was that better managed the COVID crisis. So this kind of a technology will help uh, the farmer to get connected. And another important way to get more connected is that you know instead of uh, promoting more on the distributor or a processor, you try to promote more on the farmer-owned brand. So some of the Based by which uh, you know the farmer-owned brand can be promoted is like you know chikuda banana like a producer brand or based on a variety like in Lady Apple or something which is very common even in I mean uh, in uh, maybe Kanyakumari and uh, Kerala where you have got a name and you know there is also a variety brand can be very much brand branded or you brand even based on the certificate this is another way of doing even an organic certification that gives you this key, what you call this consumer confidence level. Maybe another some one which is very much relevant today is more of what you call as a geography branding. Right? The place from where the product is coming. Now, when you say it is more of what you call as a country of origin labeling, and this will also have a what you call as a negative effect today, especially when I was talking about one country that did not manage very well or that got very badly affected. And if they go for you know promoting their brand with country of origin labeling, and uh, I'm sure that this will have a negative image, that because the country image comes down, the product image also comes down. So therefore, an alteration to this you need to. There are some people they have started doing it. Even an Australian experience, not to this particular COVID pandemic, a couple of years back, you know, there is a hepatitis virus which started spreading even in, in Australia. So the health ministry and the industry ministry joined together. They said. Uh, the, what they have the logo as of like what you call as made in India or made in Australia is not enough. They wanted to give a message to the consumer, complete traceability, who has produced, who has processed, who has packed, and who has marketed. So for which they have come up with a different logo, and this is what is going to be even to the future, even in other countries also. You know, people are going to make it a country of origin labeling as mandatory, not as voluntary. And this again, under Europe, you know, there's a study that tells about, you know, every consumer wanting to know about from where the product is coming. And they have conducted a study. They found that no consumer will buy a food product based on a single attribute. They considered multiple attributes, multiple factors, you know, before they... One important is that, you know, the place of origin. The place of origin is also one, you know, along with the taste, uh, price, uh, convenience, so on and so forth. The place of origin is also another important one that it makes a lot of sense to the consumer, especially when they go for the product like coffee, staple product, milk or dairy, fish product, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, meat, etc. The place of origin is very, very important. So the learning is that at this kind of first you try you as a producer you as a farmer try to connect the, uh, the the consumer and saying that 
it is being produced here, it is being processed here, this is how we have done it. And definitely this will improve the customer confidence and you'll be able to have your own business. So that is the reason why the concept of horticulture's uh, loca bore is getting more and more famous today. Right, you know, uh, one is uh, people preference to the locally made product, their consumer confidence level is very high, they know about the location. Second one, because of the logistics disruption from the other place, the product is not able to get moved. So the concept of loca bore is uh, getting more uh, uh, prominence. But there are certain exemptions like, you know, the, uh, the live hallow, somewhere where, you know, uh, there is people in the local place where there is a lot of vegetation, people are going anti or the Israel movement, or, you know, they, they don't want, they want to avoid the Israel products. So what they was the pro-Israel movement and they started uh, making as a movement. And uh, if you, you are in whichever part of the uh, world, you become, uh, you subscribe for this particular movement, and uh, they will send you the packet of the the products that are being produced by the small producers in and around you know the uh, Judea and Samaria, which was most uh, very much affected by this uh, uh, you know the Israeli conflict. So therefore, uh, this is also another one. Like it's not that you know only a local war only to the local market. The local market you don't have got a good name that you can connect digitally to the entire world, and uh, this can be very much. Done. So there is there are multiple ways of uh, doing it, and uh, uh, only thing is you need to be very, very as you said, you know, resilient. You need to be very open. You need to accept to a new idea, not stick on to what you were, you know, not having, uh, you know, comfortable with uh, your your comfort zone. As I was talking about a typical dodo bird, you know, you are more comfortable with your, uh, you know, your comfort zone, and uh, later when the crisis comes, you find it very difficult to keep going. Right. So therefore, under these circumstances, uh, what is required is that you need to have a, a you know a more of uh, leaders with a new skill set, open mind, and because you are undergoing a typical what you call it as uh, a VUCA environment, and this VUCA environment need to be converted to a prime VUCA or VUCA prime. So uh, it is what you call it as you know the, the volatility convert the volatility to the vision. And uncertainty to an understanding, then uh, then uh, ambiguity to agility, then uh, complexity to clarity. So this VUCA need to be converted to the VUCA prime, and for which what you require is that you need to have an open mind. You need to have, have an accept that yes, there is a crisis, and uh, you need to keep going. And uh, finally, I think uh, this is sometime I have given earlier also the I was sharing this experience of a farmer you know, in uh, the United States of America, who was a small producer of uh, potato. And uh, uh, in that region is known for producing the best quality of potato, where, you know, in spite of the best quality, since they're all small farmers, they were facing a lot of uh, problem in marketing it because they were in the remote corner. There is no proper logistics facility. So what happened was this farmer, when everybody started complaining about uh, uh, they you know the difficulty in their life. So this farmer says that this difficulty in my life is making my life better, not bitter. So what he does is that after harvesting, when he goes for marketing, he takes the roughest route. When he takes the roughest route, the potatoes, the 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 bigger one will uh, race to the top. The small potato will land at the bottom, and the medium will come to the middle of it. So when he reaches the market, what happens is that the sorting is done automatically. When he marketed according to the sorting and the grading, he gets a better remunerative price. So he says that when I'm going undergoing, you know, when the going is getting tough, the tough gets going. So you need to be very tough, especially we are in a very difficult situation and you need to be very, very, very much what you call as a new thinking, new ideas, innovative way of doing it. Only then you will be able to keep going Otherwise, things are going to be very, very difficult in the, because of this particular COVID crisis. So with this particular very brief, I conclude my presentation. And once again, I thank you. I thank all the organizers. I thank the principal. I thank uh, uh, the entire team. I thank Dr. Jabba Melvin for giving me this opportunity and having me on your show. Thank you so much.